join us for our Sunday services at 9 or 11 a.m. and our midweek services on Wednesdays from 7 to 8.30 p.m. See you soon. Bethel Covenant Assembly of God, touching heaven and changing earth. I want to welcome everybody here especially tonight for what God has for us. If you don't mind, rise up for the reading of God's word. Psalm number 40. I want to share with us principles. Tell you about principles to bounce him back. You know, we can talk about bounce back, bounce back. But I told you, God does not rule the world by miracles. But God rules the world by principles of his word. Tell you about principles of his word. Psalm number 40. He says, I waited patiently. Somebody say patiently. For the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible peace and out of a miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear. And put their trust in the Lord. Verse 4. Let's read it together. One to go. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respected not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Look at verse 5. Many have been saying it. O Lord, my God, are thy what? God will do wonders for you. Which thou hast taught and thy thoughts which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. And if I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Today, I speak the word of God. As the word of God comes forth with power tonight, God will give you miracles beyond number. Father, bless your word. Within the short time we have, anoint these lips of clay. Surprise every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every person under the sound of my voice. May they be quickened by the power in your word. Do what no man can do and take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayer. Come on, if you know God will do wonders in your life, let me hear the loudest amen in the building. I want you to prophesy unto five people. Tell them God will do wonders without number. Five people, tell them God will do wonders without number. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I said God will do wonders without number. God will do wonders without number. Wonders without number. Wonders without number. Wonders without number, wonders without. If you believe it, let me hear the loudest amen all over this building. You may be seated. You know, last week we started this series on bouncing back. You shall bounce back. But God wants me to share with us tonight how can a man bounce back? Just like when we share it, if you tell someone, yes. God is going to do this. One of the questions that a lot of believers ask, that most times we have few answers, is how 
shall this be? That's almost like what Mary asked the angel. Say, yeah, you're going to have a son. But she had to ask how. Now, there's nothing wrong in asking God how. Somebody hear me? How will he do it? There's nothing wrong. But I want you to ask not with the intention to say, I don't believe you. But I want you to ask him, how, what are the things that you need to do? Or how will he make it possible for you? No, you are not, I'm not saying you should question his ability. But ask him, Lord, how can these things happen so that I can position myself? And as God gives you those principles, you must yield yourself. Tell your neighbor, you must yield yourself. Before I go too far on the principles, I want to say this. God's plan is not for any man to remain low in life. The plan of the devil is to keep you at the low end of life. The plan of the devil is for things not to happen for you, not for you not to be joyful, for you not to rejoice, for you not to be married. And even if you are married, not to be married happily. Or even though you are married, you don't have children. Those are the kind of things the devil... The devil is always on the negative side of the spectrum. On the other hand, God is a good God. Tell you, God is a good God. The Bible says in the book of James that God... All good and perfect gifts come from above. The Father of light of whom there is no shadow of turning, neither is there any variableness. So when things negatively happen, it's not from God. Is somebody hearing me? It's no, no, no. God does not do evil. God does not tempt with evil. It's right there in the scripture in the book of James. Satan is the source of all bad things. It's not God's will. The Bible says it is not God's will that any should perish. So God does not delight in your suffering. So hear me again one more time. It's not God's plan for you to die in your problem. Number two thing or truth you need to know that in the different seasons of life, perhaps you're going through a season that is unpleasant and you're asking God, when will this end? You must understand that God's plan for you involves you going higher, bouncing back. God's plan for you involves you coming out stronger and better. God's plan for you is to come out joyful, greater than how you entered that problem. We can see that in the life of Job, Job 42. The Bible says that the latter end of Job's life was what? Better than the beginning. So God's salvation plan, God's redemption plan, God's bouncing back plan is not for you to go back and come out and say, well, we are just managing life. No, 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 no. So if your marriage is going through problems, God's plan is not for the marriage to come and say, so how is it going? He says, mm, we're taking it one day at a time. It's going. It's going. No, 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 no. God's plan is not for you to get into the phase of management of negative situation. He said, I wish above all things that thou mayest be in good health eh? and thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prosper so for god his own pattern for your bouncing back is prosperity do you know what it means to prosper prosper is to do well and do it with a lot of abundance so that when you enjoy your mind you say hey you can tell the contrast you can tell the difference between last year my marriage i couldn't enter the house now eh i entered the house i don't want to come out because so much joy my husband, before now, did not used to do anything. Now, he cooks for me, brings me breakfast in bed. And in fact, I feel like I'm in honeymoon now. That's how God does his thing. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? God's plan for you is that, yes, at one time you couldn't afford the gas. But now, not only are you affording gas, you are buying gas for people randomly at the gas station. Somebody saying, I will not do that. That's why you are still where you are, if you say no. No, 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 I'm not trying to say this because if in your mind, as a man thinks in his heart, so you see, so if God sees that, yeah, you say, No, me ever buy gas for people, God will say, You are not ready for breakthrough. But I speak to 10 people under the sound of my voice 10, 10. There are 10 people here, God will use you to pay for people's groceries. <laughs> is somebody hearing me? Tell you the Bible, we bounce back, I will bounce back. 
I also want to let you know tonight, hear me, people of God, that there is nothing that you are going through today that is exclusive to you. Did you hear me? There is nothing you would ever pass through today that nobody has passed through it. Hear this. The book of First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. The Bible says there is no temptation that has taken you. King James Version says temptation. Ten other translations say temptation. Only one translation was able to get the real translation, which is the New English uh, translation. Next. He said there is no trial. And that is the correct translation. There is no trial that has overtaken you that is not faced by others. So don't think, you know some people look at themselves and say, I'm the only one that is suffering. You know? <laughs> if you know what people are going through. I remember my first time in the United States. Two or three weeks into it, you all may not know, but your pastor has sold ice cream. You know ice cream? Ice cream truck. I used to be the guy delivering the ice cream and collecting the money. Yes. Yes. You think you're the only one that's broke? Have you ever been broke to the point that you couldn't tell people? They look at you. Just say, just don't worry. Just leave me alone. I was broke to that point that even the work was not for pay. The work was so that I will get work. Have you ever seen someone that work so that you get work? When you take people to work, they say, how much will you pay me? My own was, let me prove myself. I don't care the term limit. Just work. So that maybe God will touch your mind. So, in fact, I took it that it was by grace that I got a work without no pay. I know you call it volunteer, but volunteer, it wasn't that I just like to do it because I want to go that direction. Are you understanding? That's volunteer. Volunteer is you volunteer yourself because you are interested in it. I know. I just work so that in, in case people look at me and say, how was work today? I say, it's fine. Did you hear me? So one of those days I was complaining. I said, God, what kind of a life is this? I was complaining. I was complaining. You know, sometimes some, some people just get somebody give you check. Somebody give. You come to church, somebody give you something. Give you what? <laughs> Let's not go there. So I, I got to one of those spots. I was complaining angry. You know, when you're speaking in tongues and just telling God, God, are you truly God? So as I was driving, as we were driving in the truck, God showed me a man I wanted to buy a screen. The man was no legs. He was amputated from waist down. Are you understand my point? He was trying to give me money. And I looked, I thought, you know, I was trying to look for the leg. All I saw was hands. Oh. I said, Lord, is, am I seeing correctly? I mean, waste. Like, no. I'm not, there's no day behind. I'm just saying half above the belt. Oh. God said, job or two legs. I said, God, give me to lick my two legs. I said, in fact, God, I started being grateful. I started discovering that there is more to life than job and money. Sometimes we let ingratitude, we let complaining, you let your current condition to twist your perspective of how good God is. Do you know God is good to you? Even when you don't deserve it. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. So God told me, and I said, God, please, you know what? Anytime you give me a job, I'm okay. It changed my perspective. I lifted up my hands as I had to bless him. I said, God, I can walk with my two legs. I can jump. And me, my volunteer state, I'm the one selling ice cream to somebody. That if they tell that man between the truck I am in volunteering and the wheelchair where he is, choose one. 
Do you know the man's choice? You know the answer. He will choose my situation quickly. Let me tell you. There are over 15 million people that will do anything to be in your situation. I'm not trying to speak evil of any nation. Are you in Afghanistan? Can you go to Afghanistan now? What of Iraq? Some of those situations, you will not even, if they tell you take, go for free, you will say no. Is it not true? But sometimes we allow what we are going through to even affect our place. They say, lift your hands and say, oh, no, I will not lift up my hand. If you know what God has done for you, you will lift up your two legs and your hand together. Lift your hands one more time and tell him, thank you, Jesus. Better lift your hands and tell him, thank you, Jesus. Let's talk about principles. So what I'm saying to you is, there is no trial that you are facing that is not common to man. But the Bible says, but God is faithful. Someone say, God is faithful. Yes. Who will not allow you to be tried beyond what you are able to bear? That is to say, God knows what you can handle. I know it's a law too. But God knows what you can handle. God knows you can handle it. Tell you the more God knows you can handle it. Oh, yes. God knows. God knows you will not die. He knows your limit. You know, just like you talk about elastic limit, God knows. But you see what? In his knowledge of your capacity, that doesn't change his faithfulness. His faithfulness is constant. Is somebody hearing me? And because he made you, he knows how much you can bear. So sometimes God wants to see how much he can take you to bless you. Because the distance he takes you, the journey he takes you through is a part of your story of how he brought you far. Is somebody hearing me? I, I will not be telling you the story now if I didn't go through it, right? But how many of you know that when I was going through that situation, it wasn't pleasant? It wasn't. I couldn't pay some bills. Things were not happening. But you know what? I learned some things through that process. In fact, I learned how to manage conditions and situations with thanksgiving in that condition. I learned contentment. And you know what the Bible says? Godliness and what? Contentment is great gain. God taught me never to be envious. In fact, that's why now, no matter what God gives to me, I don't remember, I don't try to, if I buy a duke and I don't matter anything, I just go my way. If you give me small car, I will drive it. You give me a big one, I will drive it. Because a man's life does not consist upon the abundance of things that he own. I'm not in any competition with anybody. You must understand that. So, there were some principles. They, so, God will take you through those situations to teach you principles of stress management. If you've never failed before, you won't respect exams. How many of you have ever taken exams? That you said, Lord, if you will deliver me. You know why you feel like that? Because you have failed before and you know how bad you felt. So when they say read, you read. God will help you pass every exam of life. So let's talk about principles now. Principle number one. Everybody say number one. In every situation of your life, you must acknowledge God. Tell you about acknowledge God. You see, one thing about Job in his condition was he never failed to acknowledge God. Yeah. Even when the wife was saying, curse God and die in Job chapter 2. You know what he said? He said, can we take good things from God? And we will also not receive bad things. In fact, at the end of chapter 1, he said, the Lord give it. And the Lord take it away. Did, did you see how he ended his statement? Blessed be. So in that condition, are you hearing me? I'm, listen to me. You may know that God is there in your situation. But knowing is not enough. Acknowledging. You know there's a big difference between knowing and acknowledging. For example, Brother Bassi, I may know that you are in church. But if I don't acknowledge your presence, it's almost like you yourself will be guessing did I know 
that you were there. Are you, are you getting my point? So sometimes, God is looking at us and guessing, do they really know that I'm, I'm, I can change this situation? Do they really know that I'm the one in charge? So when you don't acknowledge him, your condition remains like that for a long time. You know how? Because God is looking at you and saying, oh, he must be managing very well. Oh, he's really tough. Have you ever seen when you gave someone a load and they're handling it, they're not saying anything? They're looking at you. You don't know whether the load is killing them or they are, they are trying to prove toughness. So when you don't acknowledge God in the midst of your crisis, God is saying maybe you are doing some gymming. You are trying to build muscle. Whereas you are almost cracking. Job. People, you know, a lot, a lot of theologians have said that that, how can the Lord, does not, the Lord cannot give and the Lord take away. That statement of Job was a right intention but a wrong expression. Because truly, God does not give you a blessing and take it away. The gift and calling of God is without repentance. But it was not the expression that mattered to God. It was the acknowledgement. How do I know? Because at the end of the statement, he said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know what some people do? After they have complained, they didn't say, God, you know what? But I say, thank you that I'm still where I am. So they complain and they stop. So God is waiting for the blessed. Because the blessed that will change the situation. I learned this principle when I was going through my tough time in college. You know, how many of you know that giving thanks in your most difficult situation <laughs> is the hardest thing? It is a true testament of your faith. When things are going well for you, I say, blessed be the Lord. Well, of course. Have you ever given somebody ice cream and they said no? <laughs> Vanilla? You know. Chocolate. You, you'll be excited. But in the midst of your situation, can you rejoice when you are hungry? Can you jump and still be celebrating? Like, oh, everything is good. So when I was going through my most dangerous situation, I remembered what Joe said. So I remember that day as I received the result and it was not good. I knelt down. I said, because I've been taught in church, whether in good or in bad situation, give thanks to God. For this is the, the will, not your choice. This is the will of God. in Christ Jesus. So you know what I did? I went there that day and I knelt down in the middle of the bad results. So I lifted, I said, God, I thank you that I did not pass this exam. Brothers and sisters, if you see the hot tears that came up from my eyes. <laughs> How many of you have ever shed hot tears? No, no, you don't understand. You know what hot tears is? That you can feel the warmth of the tears. And you know, in your mind, you say, God, 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 you know I'm your boy, man. Don't do me like this. I'm telling you, hot tears as I wept. God said, clear you, I go and leave praise worship in church. <laughs> Guess what, brothers and sisters? I went to fellowship. Guess what, brothers I just see someone who doesn't want to bounce back. I came to church, Sister Dami. Eh? I praise God. You know when you are dancing like everything? People were looking at me and say, brother, congratulations. Because they were congratulating me, thinking that I passed the exam. Only me say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But ladies and gentlemen, they were congratulating my future. Somebody hope is not gone for you. You are, you are not hearing me. You are not, I said there is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. Today I decree and I declare in the name that is above every other name, may God cause you to rejoice after today's service. I said may God cause you to rejoice after today's service. If you believe in when your hands and shout a big hallelujah. Hey, oh yes. But God did it. Is somebody hearing me? 
God will do it for you. So in the midst of your situation, brothers and sisters, make sure you do what? Acknowledge God. Let me show you this. When you acknowledge God in your unpleasant situation, how do you do that? You worship him. How? How do you acknowledge him? That when you see that unpleasant situation, you worship him for who he is and not for what he has done. A true, the Bible says, for the father is seeking for who? True, not praisers. Praisers are emotional. Worshippers are true. Praisers. If I give you 1,000 now. Hey! If I give you 2,000, your dance for 2,000 will be more. But for worshippers, no physical thing can determine how a true worshiper worship because you cannot worship falsely. Worship is a true thing. Worship is true. You can't worship false. You can praise. You can praise because praise is all dependent on how you feel. Worship is not dependent on how you feel. Worship depends on how he feels. Somebody hearing me? Go to Job chapter 1 and verse number 20. Job 120. Look at how Job acknowledged God when he heard his situation. The Bible said that Job arose and rose and rent his mantle. And what did he do? Shaved his head and fell upon the ground. And what did he do next? He worshipped. He worshipped this God. His reaction because in verse 1, verse 2 and 3, he was a worshipper. His condition did not change in verse 20. Is somebody hearing me? You, for you as a believer, the temperature of your destiny should not affect your worship. You say somebody break up with you, it shouldn't change the way you worship God. Is somebody hearing me? Somebody tell you, I will marry you. Then later they tell you, give me the ring back. Oh, it's okay. Take your trouble and go. God has just saved me from bad head. It's true. There are some problems you don't want to deal with. God will help you so that you don't struggle with it. But thank God because God is the only one on your side even when you yourself are not on your own side. Did you hear me? He worshiped God. Look at verse 21. Look at, look at verse 21 there. Look at his statement. He said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return hither. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Look at the last sentence. Blessed. Okay. So when we talk about acknowledging God, that doesn't mean you don't cry. Are you hearing me? No, 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 no. When people say, oh, don't cry. If you are crying, it means that you are. No, 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 no. You are human. Tell you about you are human. But you are a believer. You're, you're, you're human. If something, if you were disappointed, you, you, it's okay to cry. But in the midst of that cry, still give God a praise. Still tell God, God, you are too much. God, you got my back. God, you will take care of me. God, you love me so much. God, you will fulfill your word. You are too faithful to fail. <laughs> Lift your hands and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Number two, principle number two. Make sure, everybody say make sure, that every sin issue in your life is dealt with. When you are, we're talking about principles of bouncing back. Number one, I said, number one principle is to acknowledge God. Number two, make sure that if there is a sin issue, that it is dealt with. Because if you don't deal with the sin issue, you will not bounce back. And guess what? The devil will throw you options in your time when you are at the bottom. That is when you see some people when they go through sick certain situation, you know, they go back to, they, go, they, they resort to alcoholism. They re resort to tobacco. They resort to prescription medication and just do crazy stuff. They say, you know what? I've gone to church. I didn't pass the exam. I'm going to well go to the club and just do whatever. Fornicate and drink. With, with, with that pattern, you can never 
bounce back. So when you are going through situation, I learned a principle in my life. Anytime something happens, I look into the mirror. Anytime something happens, you have to ask yourself. For example, if for example, if something something happens, you might ask, Lord, why did this happen? Why did I fail this exam? Why did this happen? You must you must ask yourself. If it's a sin issue, repentance is the answer. Is somebody hearing me? Yes, because everything that happens in life has a cause and effect. Everything. Everything. So, for example, you, you are doing business, and all of a sudden the business goes down. Ask yourself, is there something I am doing wrong that allowed this to happen? Is somebody hearing me? Yes. So, in your life, if there is a sin issue, repentance in the gate. The Bible says in the book of Acts, it says repent so that times of refreshing might come. Refreshing is bouncing back. No repentance, no refreshing. No repentance, no bouncing back. Did you see David where after committing fornication? The Bible says, and God sent a message to him. The baby died. The baby with Bathsheba. And the Bible says, and he, that's where Psalm 51 came. Creating me a clear heart of God. And renew a right spirit within me. He said, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit. When nobody knew about the Holy Spirit, David knew. He has not been given, no? I hope you know. He has not been given. They, was, Jesus was to come. And he will now go back and send the Holy Ghost. David knew him before Jesus came. That's another dimension. Did anybody catch that? We will reach there one day. So David knew. He said, please take not your Holy Spirit from me. He said, but restore. That restore is bounce back. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Somebody say, Pastor, how do I know there is a sin issue? One of the ways to know that there is a sin issue is that you lose the joy of salvation. If you want to know whether the source of your problem is sin, you will lose joy. There, there will be a spirit of sadness and depression that is hanging over your life. Because if it is not due to sin, it will be a trial, but your joy will still be maintained. And you will look at it like, yes, I may be going through this, but I know my Redeemer lives. That is how you know that the problem is not from sin. Because joy is a fruit of what? Not happiness. Who? If you like, in that midst of the situation, let somebody tell you, let's go and have ice cream. Let, let me buy you a new car. It will not change. It will, be, you will, it will only help. Are you hearing me, church? Because people will be wondering, Pastor, how do you know that this problem I'm going through is a sin issue? Because you will not have joy. You will not have joy. No matter what you do. In fact, they will tell you, let's buy new clothes. You will dress nice, but in the midst of the dressing nice, you won't know when you frown your face. But if that problem is not as a result of sin, and it's as a result of a trial, a test of your faith, you know what? The Bible says you are now renewed. You are renewed. And you are being translated from glory to glory. So in the midst, are you hearing me? In the midst of that problem, you are shining. People will be wondering, ah, ah, is this not the person that is going through this thing? They ask you, you say, ah, yeah, we are still believing God. So they'll be asking you, ah, I can't understand that if we, if we was, how can you be going to, no, no, no. Because God is refining your faith. That's why the Bible talks about purer than silver, purified seven times. So you are going through it. God is teaching you some life lessons, but your joy is renewed. That's why you discover that joy is not but two fruit of spirit. After love, joy. That's why David said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation and give me a willing spirit to sustain is somebody hearing me? If you don't deal with the seed issue, you will go down. If you don't deal with the seed issue, even though there is a temporary relief, you will come back to that same situation. Brothers and sisters, if there is a seed issue in your life, you must deal with it by asking God for repentance. Tell your neighbor, is there a seed issue in your life? Don't let them be making straight face for you. Tell them, brother, 
Tell them, sister. Don't let anybody make you feel like, look at them, look at them. Say, is there a sin issue in your life? Please deal with it. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. First John chapter 2 verse 1. John was saying, little children, I write these things to you, that ye sin not. God doesn't want you to sin. He said, but if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Did you see that? So Jesus is a righteous one. He's the one that we advocate and say, Father, please forgive. But if you don't go to him and repent, things will not change. May the Lord help you. I said, may the Lord help you. Let me give you this last one on this, on this sin issue. Hear this. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13, if you read from verse 11, the Bible says, and do this understanding the occasion that the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. God is coming for, your, for you. He's coming for the saints. It's not about the stuff that you're going through. One day, yes, you may not, get, you may not have all you're looking for right now. But one day God is coming and you're going to a better place. Don't allow the current situation that you are going through to mask the fact that you are a citizen of heaven. Romans 13 verse 12. The Bible says that the night is nearly over. The day has drawn near. So let us lay aside every deed of darkness and put on the armor of light. God wants you to take away every sin in your life. Tell your neighbor, take it off, take it off. I can't hear somebody say, take it off, take it off. Number three, you must turn to God with repentance and righteous living. Tell your neighbor, turn to God. So when you are going through your negative situation, yes, number one, you acknowledge God in your problem. Number two, make sure if there's a sin issue, you deal with it. And if there's no sin issue, remain righteous. You must turn to God in righteousness and live holy. Make sure nothing contaminates you. In fact, my time of greatest challenge was the time I read the Bible the most. Was the time I prayed the most. That was when I learned to pray in the field. That's when I learned to talk to God. That's when God trained me how to hear his voice. Turn to righteousness. Come to his house. Don't, listen, the devil is such a bad devil that when you are going through your problem, he will want you to stop coming to church. Now, everybody hear me. I'm not telling you that church is the solution to your problem. I repeat. Church, are you all hearing me? Can I get an amen? amen. God is the solution. In fact, Jesus is the solution to your problem. Do you know why we encourage you to come to the church? Because it is his house. Do you, do you settle police case in your house? Where do you go? You go to court. Why do you go to court? Because the judge don't live in your house. Does he have the ability to come to your house? Yes. But not to do judgment. <laughs> do you get it now? Church people, you got quiet. Do you get it now? Get it. So people say, oh, they just want us to come to church. It is to help you table your case at the courts. Before the Lord. That God, the devil is chasing me. Please chase him. <laughs> Do you hear me? Is he the one that said, he said, My house shall be the house of prayer? Even Jesus knew the way to the synagogue. You that is not Jesus. You don't know the way. You, you are not ready to bounce back. You are not. So, what I'm saying to you, people of God, is when you at least come to his house, he will say, Ah, you have come home. The angel owner say, ah, Baba God, John has come. Say, it seems like John is not smiling, no. He says, okay, okay, let's do something for him. We we'll do for him. But if in the, in, the, in the beauty of your house, you cover yourself under one blanket, and you are sad, and in that place you are not saying anything, how does God help you with that situation? Your emotions does not change your condition. Feel like cry. 
cry. Oh, how will I fail? He said, it won't me fail. He said, you fail. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. The throne of grace is his altar. You know that they are fighting you on the job. They already told you that there are 20 people that they want to downsize. And you are still playing some game. You better look for oil. Look for God. That is God. God, I've come here. God, please don't let me be put to shame. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? I'm telling you the truth. So, there are things that righteous people do. You know what? The Bible said that the people, the, 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 the children of this world, I have to finish this series because I don't, want to, I, don't want to, I don't want to take it to Sunday. They are wiser in their own generation than the children of light. The children of this world, when they are going through problems, they don't sit down. Unbelievers, if they are going through, they are going to problems. They will do whatever. If they tell them, dance, wake up 5 a.m., dance around this thing, dance, jump, 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 jump. They will do, you know what they will do? They will wake up. 4.30, they will jump. Tell believers, say, who says you should really jump? What a prayer. What, what a prayer. What of calling brethren to say, please, can you fast and pray for me? Because the devil is a bad devil. He has come to steal. He has come to kill. He has come to destroy. But the Bible said that he, God has come, that you may have life and have it in abundance. So you must know how to use your own spiritual technology. Go to his house. Seek his face. Do what is right. Live a life of holiness. Don't involve yourself with sin. Make sure you run away so that the day God will have mercy upon you, it should not be hard. Did you not discover that Hannah was being chastised by Penina? Every day. Every day. Every day. He, she discovered that fighting with Penina, it will not work. Let me tell you, some of the problems that you are going through, mouth conversation is not the solution. It's knee conversation. You need to go to the school of neology. Is somebody hearing me? When you talk to God, and God will hear you. The Bible says immediately, Hannah said, I'm not going here because something, Penina had provoked her. Some problems must provoke you. Provoke you. When one professor said, I will not, I will not move forward. I would spend an extra year. I said, ah, God. I told God, I said, God, your word says, affliction shall not rise again. He said, I've repeated one year. Lord, and no repeating. Instead of me to repeat, somebody's first one will go. Yeah. I told God, I'm not lying to you. Ladies and gentlemen, and no playing in this thing. I told God, I said, God, you told Pharaoh, let my people go. Israel is my firstborn son. If not, I take your first son. I said, God, you have done it before. Do it in Egypt. Do it in Nigeria. Hallelujah. I lined on something to God. God told me, so go into three days and fasting and prayer. I've never fasted three days before. But how many of you know when you're going through problems? God has to teach you some life lessons. Sometimes you don't get it when nothing is going on. Have you noticed that when a lion is chasing you, nobody tells you to run. It don't matter your size. You take off. Exactly the same situation. Brothers and sisters, I fasted three days. The Lord told me, don't appear before this man again until you fast. On the third day, I appear before the man. The man said, I will never forget. He was a professor of medicine. You best of a I don't lie. I'm saying it. I don't care. I've already passed. I have my diploma in my hand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, told, I said, God, if I appear before this professor one more time, if he doesn't let me go, let his first son go. You know what? When I appeared that day before the professor, I went to the professor's door. You know what he told me? He says, young man, let me just tell you, since you've been coming to this door, I've not been able to sleep. I said, Lord, thank you, because my prayers have been answered. In fact, I said, from there, you will not sleep anymore until you let me go. Ladies and gentlemen, as I was going, God told me, go back and read for that exam, because he's going to call you suddenly. So I started to read. I lined up as I was coming back one of the days, about two days later, four o'clock. He said they should call me and tell me to come and write an exam. Impromptu. But you know this God is the God of style. This God is too much. Tell you about this God is too much. All of a sudden, they told me to come and write an exam as it were. They think I wasn't prepared. But God has been telling me, each day as you are fasting, better start praying. Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, I made a B 
It's not A. But that, you know there's some B's you made. <laughs> I made a B in that course. You can say whatever you want to say. I have passed. I made a B in that course. Some people that wrote the exam before me did not score as much as I did. Only God can do wonders without number. Somebody, you will surprise your world. Oh, Jesus. I said, somebody, you will surprise your world. If you believe it, let me hear the loudest. Amen. John chapter 2, verse 12. He said, therefore, also now said the Lord, turn ye even unto me with all your heart. I will so finish. I have to finish this topic today. Because Sunday I must preach something new. I have to do bless and not stress. Turn ye even unto me with all your heart. How did he say you should turn? Joel chapter 2 verse 12. Everybody look at Joel chapter 2 verse 12. Say turn unto me even with all your heart. Joel chapter 2 and verse 12. Are you there? Technical are you there? Alright. He said therefore now turn unto me with all your heart. With what? We fasted. And with what? Weeping and mourning. That is how righteous people turn to God. You don't turn to God and say, God, I just turn to you. No, 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 no. You see, the, the way we righteous turn to God is by fasting, prayer, weeping and mourning. Do you know this church is open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5? One of these days, leave your workplace. Lunch time is lunch with God. God, come and pray. Lie down on the altar. Say, God, the God of better, answer me. What are you talking about? He will answer you. Hannah prayed. God answered her. God gave her a son. Not just a mother son. A son that is greater than Peninas, all the children. God will give you a blessing that will trump your competition. The Bible says he's slow to anger and of great kindness and repented him of evil. Look at verse 14. In your turning to God in righteousness, like Job did. Job came back to God. Job fasted. Job sought God. Job prayed. So your situation should make you serve God more. Pray more. Give more. Clean church more. In fact, then when I was going through my situation, I will clean church. I will give. I will fast. Whatever it takes, I do it. Because I want God to answer me. People think, oh, are you, are you manipulating? No, you are not manipulating. You are turning to God. That's what you do. Because if I go the negative way, I'm against God. I'd rather turn to him. For example, if I want to catch your attention, would I do things to catch your attention? No, no, no. Some people think, oh, you don't really necessarily need to do. You will stay there a long time. You need to do. If you if he's singing, sing for him. Sing for him that God will hear your voice and say, ah, if I don't give this person admission, I'll be wicked. I'm telling you. There's a way you serve God. God himself will begin to owe you. I'm telling you. Sing. I could sing. I could dance. Then, eh, when I hold microphone, if I fail the exam, but when I praise God, I will dance my ways, everything. I said, God, it's me and you. After I finish dance, I said, God, I've done today. It's in your hand. When it came to the exam time, I wasn't afraid when I went to receive the result. But in that place, I was telling God, God, no more failure in my life till I die. Amen. God will give you a favorable promise. Amen. Look at the next verse. Go to the next verse from there. I want to show people of God something. Joe 2, no, 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 verse 14, yes. He said, who knows? When you turn to God, he himself will return and repent. Did you hear? They said God does not repent, right? Doesn't change his mind. God will change his mind when you turn to him. He says, and he was the one that struck you with problem. But when you turn to him, when he changes his mind, he will now leave a blessing behind. Oh, somebody, God will leave a blessing for you tonight. Not only will he leave a blessing, he will leave a meat offering. Not only will he leave a meat offering, he will leave a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Somebody from today, God will give you a good gift. Amen. Principle number four. Tell your neighbor principle number four. Don't quit. Tell your neighbor don't quit. Oh, I can't hear somebody say don't quit. No, 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 no. In this don't quit, faith is the key. Faith. Tell your neighbor faith. Faith is the key that turns the tide. Don't quit. In the midst of that situation, don't give up. Have you ever heard this song? Don't give up on God. And God will not give up on you. People give up too quickly. After they wait, 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 they will change their mind. 
No, 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 no. Yes, this may, it may take a while. The Bible says, wait. The vision is for what? An appointed time. The Bible says, though he tarries. What? Wait. Don't quit. Don't quit. He has not said the husband yet. Don't say, okay, you know what? I'll just marry this person. He may be a mad person. He may be a crazy person. I'm telling you. Some people have made a mistake because at the very point that God wanted to answer them, they went too fast. Don't just, like, you have waited upon God for a job. He told you, wait, wait, wait. You don't want to take a job. That in that process, you cannot pray. You cannot come to church. How does that profit you? Is somebody hearing me? You know what God told me? That, that you are hungry does not mean you should eat cockroach. Oh, you hear me? That you are hungry. Does, that you are hungry does not mean you should eat something that you are allergic to. You, you are hungry. And you are allergic to shrimp. If you do, they give you shrimp. Will you eat? Because you have to need Benadryl and other things. You know what God's people do? God's people know that the thing that they are looking for God, you, is within God's ability to give to you. Wait. As hungry as you are, you cannot eat raw food. It is not salad. <laughs> Beans, you have to wait till it is soft. There is patience. And the type of food that you are wanting to eat is different from what brother A is eating. Emmanuel may want to eat salad, so you go and buy some green leaves. Brother Nivio may want to eat fufu. How many of you know that fufu goes through a process? You have to make it, you have to boil it, you have to make, you have to make it soft and turn it. And you have to make the soup, the F4, and put some things into it. I don't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's Holy Ghost meal. Don't worry. But listen to me. If you want to eat fufu, fufu needs patience. Some of you, what you are asking God for is a delicacy that involves skill. You went to the menu. You went to pick something scampy and other things that you have to put some marinara sauce and other stuff. How many of you know those things? It takes a special chef to make it. So what I'm telling you is, don't quit and get angry at the chef. Whereas immediately you bounce out and say, you know what? I'm just going to eat McDonald's. The chef brings the plate. Do you notice any time you eat something? I wish God's people can understand what I'm telling you today. Anytime you eat something that is not what you have an appetite for, you will wait to eat it again. If you like get angry, go and say, you know what, I'm just going to go to Jack in the Box and pick tacos. You know that the tacos is not what you want to eat. You want to eat a real food that is cooked. Ladies and gentlemen, don't settle for fast food when God wants to give you real food food. Tell your neighbor, be patient. Principle number five as I end the preaching tonight. Are you ready for the last one? No, you are not ready. Are you ready for the last one? Brothers and sisters, as God is ready to change your situation, you must expect a miracle. You're bouncing back. Eh? It's going to happen suddenly. Don't allow the situation to be so bad that you lost hope that your story will change. That's what I'm telling you. After waiting patiently, you must get ready for the miracle. For Job 22, oh God, just if you notice, go and read the story. In Job 41, he was going, just going, he was still complaining. Then all of a sudden, Job 42, God responded and said, God now started talking to his friends, Elipas, and all the other two. Then God was now rebuking them. God will rebuke your enemy tonight. After God rebuked them, you know what God now said? God now told Job. God now responded to Job. God did not, hear me, God did not respond to all Job's complaint. If you are waiting for God to respond to you with all you are saying, you ain't got no time. You are not the first. He's been doing that a long time. 
You know what God now told Job? God told Job, he said, go and pray. Are you hearing me? Go and pray for your friends. So Job went and prayed for his three friends. That prayer is a prayer of forgiveness. And I forgive you people. You have said all sorts of nonsense. You have tested me and made me almost sin against God. So immediately Job forgave his friends. God turned his situation. Go and read your Bible. There was nothing different. It wasn't like they said Job has said 50 days. And a bank came and a man dangled grass and dangled oil. And he came to church and he left praise worship for 20 days. No. The day God will answer you, it will be like a Wednesday night like this. Amen. You will suddenly get home. <laughs> like somebody under the sound of my voice. You will get home and you will receive a mail, a good mail. Uh, all of a sudden, after Job prayed for the boys, the three men, the Bible says, and God turned the captivity of Job. And the Bible says, and all of a sudden, the next year, his family and friends, they came and comforted him. Somebody, God is giving you comfort tonight. All the people that ran away from Job, the Bible says all of them brought a ring. They brought gold. Let me tell you from tonight, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus, things that you have been looking for, God will begin to send people to deliver it to you. Look at what God did to tell you bounce back. Job lost 10 children. God sent Job 10 other children. And the Bible says, go, go read it. Jemima. Eh? Another one was uh, Karen Hapok. Another one was... Uh, Keziah, those three girls, the Bible said, nobody in the whole land was as beautiful and he still lived 150 years on top. Somebody, you think you have seen something. God will put extra upon your life. I prophesy to you under the sound of my voice. The Bible says that the latter end of Job's life was better than the beginning. I prophesy to you in the name that is above every other name. God will cause your story to be greater than your former. Your latter shall be greater than your former. God will give you a miracle tonight. I command every captivity to turn. Rise up to your feet say in the name of Jesus. Every captivity in my life. I command it to turn tonight. I believe you God tonight. I believe you my situation will change tonight. I believe you my condition will change tonight. Lift up your voice wherever you are. There shall be a turning around. There shall be a turning around. There shall be a turning around. I expect a miracle. Begin to say, Lord, I believe you. 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 There shall be a change. There shall be a change. There shall be a change. Lift up your hands above your head. Wherever you are in this building. Maka poribaba. Leke papaba. Lesi de brababa. Jeke poribaba baba. My story must change. My story. I give you 60 more seconds. I want you to talk to God. Say, wipe away my tears. Wipe away my tears. May my latter be greater than my former. Maka poribaba baba. Tonight. 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 Jeke telibaba baba. Reproko seliba. Make it a God wants to hear your voice. Where are those that want God to change their story? Lift up your voice. What type of job are you looking for? What type of education are you looking for? What type of business are you looking for? What type of open door are you looking for? Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it now. Receive it. Receive it. Lift your two hands above your head. Say, Lord, I receive. I receive. I receive joy. I receive grace. I receive open door. I receive breakthrough. I receive testimony. Now, 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 now. Where are those that can call upon God? Now. In Jesus' mighty, victorious name, we have prayed. Come on, let me hear three loud amen. One more time. One more time. Lift your two hands above you. Lord, I've given your word tonight. These are your people. 
as our faces are different, so are our stories different. I pray to that meet every man, every woman, every boy and girl at the point of their need. Change every story to glory. Come on, let me hear your amen all over the building. I prophesy from tonight as today is the last day of May. May today mark the end of your sorrow. May today mark the end of your shame. May today mark the end of your pain. May God give you a reason to rejoice. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. And the God of bouncing back. The God that causes a man's story to turn around. And the God that restored everything that Job had lost. And made the latter end of Job's life to be greater than the beginning. May that God do the same for you. Thank you, Father, for answers to prayers. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. If you receive the word today, clap your hands and give him praise. Come on, clap, 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 clap. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I bounce back, I bounce back, I bounce back. Come on, tell them I bounce back, I bounce back, I bounce back, I bounce back, I bounce back. In the name of Jesus.